It's Nigeria's second Monetary Policy Committee meeting for the year, a few weeks after the first MPC meeting, under the leadership of Olayemi Cardoso, where the committee voted for a 400 basis point rate hike. Analysts say they expect the rate hike to continue, albeit less aggressive. Hello and welcome to this special broadcast of Nigeria's MPC meeting. I'm Mr. Awuni. Now I have a powerful lineup of guests who will in the next few minutes unpack key monetary and fiscal policy reforms we've seen in stabilizing the Nigerian economy. Well, I have with me in the studio uh, today, Bismarck Ruwane, the CEO of Financial Derivatives. So also with me in the studio today is Kayodia Kindele, CEO of Coronation Capital and Egia Pata, Chairman of Skymark Partners, uh, all here with me in the studio to, of course, uh, share their thoughts just uh, ahead of the MPC uh, meeting. Now, in the last MPC meeting, a size of 400 basis point rate hike, the CBN governor hinted on the efforts at stabilizing the Naira, including addressing the FX backlog, which as we speak, the government says $7 billion uh, backlog has been cleared. We've also seen the resumption of sales of FX to BDC operators in the country. However, inflation rose significantly to 31.7% in February this year. Uh, how will the monetary authorities respond in today's meeting? Well, let's get right to our conversation. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Pleasure to have you on the show today. Kada, let me start with you. 400 basis points at the last meeting, but there have been a number of developments since the last meeting. We've seen the CBN, we've seen the Naira strengthen at both the NAFEX and NAFEM, and also the parallel market, 1,400 Naira levels. We've seen inflation spike to over 31%, all that I mentioned. But what are your thoughts in terms of how the CBN, the monetary authorities, are going to respond to those key indicators today? Um, I think um, the last decision has not been long enough to, for it to see any effect on inflation yet. But I think the fact that inflation is still quite aggressively strong um, is still a warning sign to them. Um, I think they need to be very careful that they, they decide to fight inflation and they have to make sure they continue that fight until it is actually seen to be tamed. Otherwise, if they do a start and stop, confidence in CBM will, will drop. So I think there will be, there's probably going to be a hike um, as they try to in, basically keep on giving the message that they are fighting inflation they want to mop up excess liquidity and re reinstate the confidence in the CBA and fighting inflation. So I think that will still happen. Um, we will wait for another two or three months before we see what that, the effect is going to have on inflation going forward. We've seen the effects on the FX market um, to an extent. Um, but I think in the FX market, it's going to take us another couple of months to see where it stabilizes that. Right. Thank you so much for that. But I wanted to ask, before I move on to Bismarck, how aggressive are you? What's your money on? I, th I, th I think we've seen 100 and 200 basis points. Okay. Bismarck, uh, we have <laughs> I know you and I have had several conversations. I mean, you were at the, uh, with us at uh, the uh, last panel. Uh, yeah. Just also, same question, the key, in the key developments we've seen since the last meeting, notably the strengthening of the Naira. What are your thoughts in terms of, I mean, the no, extent I, of I the... I see the developments in, in a different context. Huh. For in the forex market, we, we start by sanitization of the market, then liberalization before you now talk about supply and if you take it sequentially you can see that there's still some way to go uh, but certainly at 1410 which is the power market as of this afternoon is moved significantly from 1915 the second thing about um, what's what's driving this is driving what's driving it is excess liquidity on one hand which has been mopped up and to a large extent um, the uh, other, other exogenous cost factors. But core inflation is up, food inflation is up, and headline inflation is up. Now, the point is that the, what, what Cardoso had been using has been what we call the feedback rule. Consult, get a feedback, and then act. But I think it's, they're going to move to the anticipatory rule. Okay. The anticipatory rule means that you anticipate certain things and you take steps in anticipation of those measures or those developments. Uh, so if you say inflation is going to be tapered because interest rates have increased, because the price of diesel is coming down, but you have this one other big elephant in the room, which is the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. If the minimum wage is going to be announced, uh, rumor is uh, uh, May 1, which is Workers' Day, then you have to have a monetary policy that anticipates this and takes that into consideration. Therefore, even if you are going to go a bit dovish, mm -hmm. you have to be a bit hawkish to take that, out, take that liquidity out of the system. Liquidity of productivity is, is a recipe for uh, hyperinflation. 
So I kind of go with a 150 basis points now. Okay. So I don't send the wrong signal. I send a, a hard landing, right? So we, we would, but you would have to expect another hike after that. Please note that the 400 basis points was areas. In other right. words, okay. for Since seven, we didn't have, that we didn't have meetings for seven months. So don't, let us not assume that we did 400 basis points because we were hawkish, because we were, we were bold. No, it is, we are just catching up with the areas of interest rates that we should have done before now. So. Okay. Basis 150 points. basis points. Uh, again, let me come to you. Now, conversations since the last meeting have sort of been mixed. Uh, I mean, speaking to analysts, speaking to economists now, they've, you know, some have been on the side of, okay, yes, obviously we need to fight inflation right now. We need to stop the hemorrhage and we need to get the economy back on track. But I've also heard the voices of those who are saying, look, the CBN is essentially sacrificing GDP growth to bring down inflation. And this you know, works against the fiscal authorities in trying to grow the economy, especially in the context of the $1 trillion economy. But I mean, the, the overall argument is, look, this is a short-term measure. But we know that, I mean, the next couple of months, we would see, in, Bismarck mentioned uh, the minimum wage, we would see this inflation still trending higher. But what are your thoughts and also your uh, prediction for a rate hike today? Well, I, I think that there's going to be a significant hike today, probably 225 basis points to 25 percent. Okay. Um, a number of things to bear in mind. I mean, normally when when central banks believe that higher interest rates tame inflation, you normally have collateral damage, which is normally the actual economy. Okay. And so they'll keep hiking rates till either inflation stops rising or you go into an official recession. Okay. Um, the last hike was just a month ago. And so hiking to like 25% now is a catch-up move. You have to look at what's happening in Ghana and Egypt as proxies. I think in Ghana, their NPR is 29%. I think Egypt's around 27%. And they have had similar inflation type problems in Nigeria. And the central bank clearly has a more IMF type philosophy that is really just going after interest rates. Bear in mind that the higher interest rates do solve a number of things on the short term. They brought in foreign portfolio investment money, dollars. They, they, they made Naira an attractive store of value again, um, and, and then they sl they're basically slowing down the economy. Uh, but when you look at where the one-year Treasury bill has gotten to, it got to 27.3% two weeks ago. Um, not the last auction, but the auction before the last. You get an idea of how high they think they can go. 31.7% inflation is worrisome, and it will go higher, because when you compare to a similar period last year, where was the exchange rate? Probably about 750. It's now about 1,300. So big hike, um, but... They have two months till the next hike, which is in, 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 in May. Right. 200, 225. Well, that's, that's the most aggressive so far here. But Mr. let me also talk to you. I was looking at um, the latest um, uh, money supply statistics on the CBN. Uh, it's just, uh, credit statistics and broad money uh, supply. Uh, for the month of February, it surged to 95.5 trillion. That's month, uh, year on year. Uh, but on a month on month basis, up 1.96%. So that's about 1.84 trillion. Now, this is an important uh, liquidity gauge, uh, economic uh, liquidity gauge. And I know this is one, one that one of the members mentioned the last time that it's, we're seeing money supply, broad money grow in tandem with inflation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, money supply broken down into various components. Okay. What is most important is high powered money. Inside of that 97 trillion or whatever you, there's those ways and means advances which have which have been securitized right at nine percent for 40, 40 years and are hanging there until you begin to ad address that problem. It it's it's going to be an albatross for the Nigerian Monetary Policy authorities because you must deal with that and you must take that out of the system and get it, you know, for investors to buy into those instruments, thereby, in other words, pushing up interest rates. But as a percentage of GDP, 97 trillion is getting very high. It's about almost 47, 46 percent of total GDP, which is about 240 trillion naira. At this, at this level, you need to, you need to be more aggressive in mopping up the liquidity, right? Because yeah. You have the CRR at 45%. Well, that's already right? high. And you have the uh, MPR on that level. But also, during before now, they allowed the banks, special securities were not counted, were not counted as part of 
total deposits, right? So they took everything in addition. Now they've hived that off. So in other words, they refunded to the banks a lot of liquidity. There, there must be a way of taking that liquidity out. But one of the biggest misconceptions is that people think liquidity is income. They, you can borrow liquidity, but right. you can't borrow income. So the whole idea is that the marginal propensity to consume, which the interest rates addresses, right. right? It addresses, it's an income thing. It does not address the liquidity issue. So there, there's a lot of classroom economics that needs to be done to address this and look at it holistically. holistically right. um, but I still believe that that will be a consideration. Because if, if you have 90-something, 90, 90 whatever it is, percent increase annualized, in, then right. you, you take, compare that to a GDP growth of, say, 3%. Uh, you know, I have an issue. You're already you're out of, you know, you're, you're underwater uh, in terms of inflation. So Absolutely. <laughs> it, 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 it will play into the narrative of Mr. Pata. Look, you need a more aggressive act. But there is... There's sequencing and there's the impact and the lag. When you do that, you now you can choke, right? What we call it, you are either tightening or choking. Right. There's a. We don't want to choke the economy. We want to tighten. Well, some might, well, well, I will leave that. But let me come to Kade. We just learned also that the CBN governor is seated and he's yes. going to start in the next three minutes. So we have I have three minutes with you, Kade. I wanted to just uh, get your thoughts on the CBN's uh, resumption of uh, FX sales to BDCs it is. registered. Uh, verified BDCs, 1,215 Naira, and they cannot sell in terms of a profit 1.5%. And views have been also been mixed that this is not organic. This is a CBN, you know, just controlling and trying to, you know, obviously punish the speculators. We've seen that also happening. But what are your thoughts in terms of the sustainability and just the actual act itself? I don't think it's sustainable. Um, I think we're, we're going backwards. But I think what the CBN is doing, the CBN is saying the Naira right now is undervalued and the way they think the rate is. And I think they're trying to scare speculators into selling dollars. Everyone I've spoken to has said they believe the Naira yeah. is undervalued. Yeah, but I think they're trying to sell, um, st um, scare speculators into selling by saying them that they, this is what BDCs are doing, and BDCs are not going to issue at the lower rate. You better sell your dollars. I bought an AFM and AFEX that we've seen it do that. Yeah, one I, I and think, that's a willing buyer, willing seller situation. I, yeah, I think the main issue is CBN needs to concentrate on, concentrate on what it's trying to do. And, one of the big issues CBN has had is lack of confidence in the CBN over the last few years. And you have to rebuild that confidence, and they started doing that. And things like this don't help. What you need to do is you need to restore Naira as a store of value. And by doing that, higher interest rates, going back to orthodox monetary policy, yeah. that's all part of the process. We can't crash, it, crash land in, in mm -hmm. the process. I think once you build that in, then you find that the dollar exchange rate will stabilize at a level that makes sense. But while doing things like this and trying to shock speculators, you might get a short-term bump. But, but it appears to be working because we're yeah, seeing Yeah, but short-term. Let's see what happens in the next three or four months. Right, Bismarck, one mm -hmm. minute for you, and then one mm -hmm. minute uh, with uh, Iggy before we, we get to the governor. See, sanitizing the market, liberalizing it, but without supply, you're going to end up where you are. So Nigeria needs new money. The new money is going to come when we go to the euro bond market to raise additional money under the conditions that are acceptable. Right. So we need that, and that has to be on the program as they go into the World Bank meetings on the 10th to the 15th of April. Perfect. That's what we're going to be seeing. Right. Uh, Ege, one minute. Uh, CBN governor is about to start his speech. Uh, your thoughts on the sale of the uh, FX to BDCs? Well, I mean, it's, um, it's a signaling me me method. I mean, they did it at 1251. Right now, the market is likely under 1300, as we speak. So when you look at the volume sold to the BDCs, it's only 10,000 each, 1,500 BDCs, 15 million. That's a drop in the, in the bucket, but it has the ability to move an entire market, which is what they've been trying to achieve. Um, what happens a few months from now is another question. Bear in mind, the following portfolio investors who came in, they've made most of their return from currency gains. Those currency gains are not going to be 15%, 20% going forward. And then you're going to get a slowdown of that flow and a reversal. Uh, so how do you get the real organic money Bismarck is talking about? Uh, that's, that's really what the focus should be on now. Oh, well, that's interesting. But that Eurobond, Eurobond market uh, visit, I mean, I know the CBN is still consulting with some international banks, but do you see us going at, the, at a good time, or, or what are our chances? No, if Nigeria wants to raise whatever amount they'll get, it's, uh, I would suggest go after summer, when rates will definitely be lower. But again, if you're desperate and you need a few billion dollars right now, that is not very short term. They've done a lot of swaps hmm. to, to boost gross reserves. If you need some money quickly, then you go to that market before summer, you get a few billion. Right. Akari, we still have about a minute before we go to Abuja. 
we, we focus so much on the, on the monetary side. I know this is a monetary conversation, but we should also talk about the fiscal authorities. I mean, when we talk about inflation, there's also a structural side to inflation, especially the food component. We're, seeing, we're still seeing that pressure on the food producing states uh, in the country. What are your thoughts in terms of the synergy we're seeing between the fiscal and the monetary authorities? Yes, we have a CBN that wants to bring down inflation, but we have a government that wants to build this big economy. We need SMEs to grow. We need job growth, but none of that is going to come if typical everyday you know, mom and pop shops cannot borrow. Yeah, I, th I think the fiscal reforms have to come in. Okay. And we've seen some stop start things, but it has to be more coordinated. And the issue, the issue you're, you're seeing right now is that with the monetary policy has taken a lead. Fiscal policy, we're expecting the tax reforms. We've been expecting that for a while. They're supposed to come back with what they're going to do in terms of tax. We're seeing drip, drip and drabs with announcement of an infrastructure fund, um, things, um, things in agriculture, CBN providing fertilizers, and various things. But there needs to be more of a coordinated policy and in terms of fiscal policy. And the main key thing, which everyone's forgetting, we need to spend less. <laughs> then at what level? At what? all levels. The government <laughs> okay. is spending so much money, borrowing and still borrowing. The, the borrowing, the, what they're going to borrow this year is massive. Right. And I mean, they started by saying, okay, no more business travel, uh, business class travel, no more travel. But these are drops in the ocean. We need to yeah. address that issue because if you continue to borrow to pay salaries, we're just going around in circles. And we have to address that fiscal issue. Now, they say they want to grow revenues, but you cannot grow all revenues. There's, a, there's so, many for, so much forward sale of, of oil that to be honest, all revenues are going to be less than what anticipated for because the next two years. Because of the forward sales. And, the, and also production issues they've had is improving, but it's not improving enough. We were doing 2.4 million barrels 10 years ago. We are struggling to do 1.5. And of that 1.5, a lot of it has been forward sold. So it, they need, that fiscal thing is, very, is key. And we need to hear more from the Minister of Finance. And uh, he's coordinating Minister of the Economy as well. Mm -hmm. We need to hear more and see more of those actions. Well, but Bisma, but what he's told us as a minister, minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister for the Economy is that we're trying to increase production to 1.6, 1.7. Uh, the FRS has a 19 trillion naira target this year, you know, way more than we've seen in the last, last year and the last couple of years. Uh, we're trying to expand the tax net to bring in more uh, revenue and, of course, outside of borrowing at the European market. But what are your thoughts? I mean, th these are good plans on paper. Uh, but like these are wishes. Said, these are wishes. Okay. Yeah, wishes but, are but not it, it, oh, it right, sounds so, like a <laughs> no, it's a wish. The truth, truth is that forex losses by those companies means that your corporate income tax is going to be now. You can you you would pay taxes on profits, not on losses. One, two. The things that have happened in Okwama, where I come from, that part of the, you know, the, the Niger Delta swamp is still a battlefield. Um, three, you have to understand that even the price of gas is reducing because of what's happening in Ukraine. So there's, there's no alternative now. You don't have summer. You must go to the Eurobond market to raise money, while at the same time, not just curtailing expenditure, but making sure expenditure is much more efficient. Because, you know, quite frankly, Keynesian economics says that you should spend more when you're in a downturn, but not, not leak more. What you're having is you're having minimum injections and maximum leakages, and that's having a negative multiplier. Uh, but again, this is a money policy committee discussion, so we'll leave fiscal out of it for now. Well, I mean, the, the two like <laughs> I mean, the, the, the two go hand in hand, yeah. and, and in other climes, we see the monetary, the fiscal authorities setting an, an inflation target. Mm. The monetary authorities they get on the same table and they say, okay, let's all you know work yeah. together. But we're not seeing that here. Yeah. here. I, I think the, the idea of spending less is not even. I mean, there's already talk about the supplementary budget. Yeah. And we are, we're just in March. I think. Right. <laughs> so, so, I know. So, so I, I think that spending yeah. less is not going to happen. Um, nobody's talking about the size of subsidy. It's, it's mm -hmm. some really large number, probably dropping with the exchange rates. But there's going to be a very big supplementary budget. Subsidy is, is fully back and it's not going anywhere. And um, it's going to be a very difficult balancing act to get the fiscal side to, to curtail its. Um, expenditure so as to have a balanced financial yeah. system. So they're paying very large high borrowing costs. We've never seen this mm -hmm. kind of borrowing costs. You're issuing long-term bond at 21%. You're issuing short-term paper at 27% and rising. I, d I don't know how it ends well, you know, at this But you and I have talked about the, I mean, this, uh, the, the short term, the, the, the treasury bills. Uh, we've, you and I have talked about how it's, you know, it, it's a short term plan uh, mm -hmm. just to bring in some of that hot money for now. Mm -hmm. And obviously there should be a ceiling somewhere. Uh, we're expecting the CBN at some point to cap and, you know, just, you know, pull back. Shouldn't that give us some sort of 
comfort? Is that's the right word? Well, for the for the one year paper, I mean, it's going to roll over in one year, so you might say that's that's not a problem. The problem is when you're seeing ten year bond at twenty one percent, you know, okay. four years, five years. You're seeing you're seeing the kind of numbers we didn't think were possible at all. And if you're saddled with that kind of debt, you know, you start to get worried as to whether there's a plan to actually repay this money. Right. You know, you're getting to those kind of levels. You know, so if it's sustained. The borrowing is sustained at this level, it'll, it'll be a problem. Now, Kado, for, for some people listening to us, uh, domestic investors, international investors, they're probably wondering to themselves, at what point, with all these plans that have been laid out by both the monetary and fiscal, fiscal authorities, at what point is this economy, at what point would it, could it potentially take a turn for the better? What are the silver linings that we can look at? Uh, where is the, how far are we away from the light at the end of the tunnel? I think we just need to have a proper plan as to where we want to go and how we're going to get there. Well, we want to build a $1 trillion economy. That is the vision. That's a wish. It's not a plan. <laughs> because um, it's part of the reason why the, uh, the president, the, C, the CBN has told the bank, so you need to recapitalize in preparation for this economy yeah, that's but, coming. Yeah, but see, the problem, that is the plan. The problem is we spent eight years trying to spend our way out of this, and it's failed, clearly. So we've now gone back to orthodox monetary policy, trying to mop up the excess liquidity and go, that eight years of low interest rates, massive expansion in public and um, borrowing by the government, what have we got to show for it? Very little. So now I have to go, okay, it didn't work. So let's try and follow orthodoxy on something that works. So all these issues, and we're talking about increasing minimum wage, various other things, that is massive borrowing. But the point of this borrowing is that you are now borrowing to do things like pay salaries, and various other things. We've done that for eight years. It's not going to work. And as Eggy said, it's just, we, we're going to reach a stage where the economy is just not going to function, but we haven't got that breathing room anymore. Right, I do apologize for yeah. butting in. We're having uh, some uh, audio issues uh, uh, with the CBN uh, connection, but we have learned, just learned, that the CBN has, the MPC has increased the uh, NPR rate by 200 basis points to 24.7 percent. So Iggy, you were <laughs> the closest yeah. at 220. Two, uh, it was 2.25. 2.25, uh, 100 sure. basis points <laughs> higher. So we're at 24.75 percent. We still have inflation at over 31 percent. Uh, Bismarck, you want to uh, react to this? Uh, we'll get more information if the other, I mean, parameters around the NPR corridor uh, were also adjusted. But 24.7 percent. Uh, I think that was a bit aggressive, but I'm not surprised. Some people say, look, We'd rather go for surgery than go for oral therapy. So that's what it is. It means that rather than the next meeting is in May, end of May. May 29 is when the president has to give his one year scorecard and a speech. So you better ensure that things start looking better between now and then. The World Bank meetings are 10th to 15th of April. So if you, if you take that timetable and take what we are seeing now, there's no question that they need to be aggressive about this. But it cannot be done in isolation of the fiscal reform, institutional reform, because fiscal reforms are just policy changes. Mm -hmm. But institutional reform, which means that the leakages within the system can be co contained. And then when people begin to see this, you, have, you are now segregating and sep actually delineating the revenue problem, because the revenue problem is different from the growth problem. Okay. Revenue right. problem, you, you subsidies, you borrowing your debt service deals with that. You take money from consumers and give it to the government. That's a revenue solution. But the, the other part is investment and net exports, which is exchange rate dependent and confidence dependent. That has not been addressed. And that, that is the long-term pain that comes before the gain. And that's... I think we are, we are in that place, but right. I'm, I'm not totally shocked that they went uh, This has happened. Uh, uh, so also just uh, the other parameters, uh, a symmetric corridor, uh, plus 100 minus 300. Uh, oh, my, Sierra, oh, back to... Sierra sti uh, still at <laughs> retained at 45%. Liquidity ratio also uh, retained. So uh, those are the, that's information coming through from uh, Abuja. Ege, uh, I'm just thinking about the overall economy. We are pr growth projections for this year. 2.9, 3.1% between the CBN, the federal government, and the IMF, but all under 3.2%. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts in terms of, you know, how we, I mean, we've talked a lot about, <laughs> Kade does not believe that we have a plan. Mr. Rawane doesn't also sort of believe that we have a plan, but 
for our you. Wishes. Uh, we, we, but I mean, <laughs> technically, they, they, on paper, they are planned. Uh, we have a I mean, supplementary budget and all of that. But what are your thoughts in terms of how do we grow this economy? I don't want us to go round and round in circles. Uh, how do we grow this economy? I, I think on the short term, growth is, 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 has to be sacrificed. I mean, you can't eat your cake and have it. I mean, these interest rates um, are going to keep going higher, and they're going to get to the point where almost the, there's almost no point doing a business. Your best business is to give your money to the government. Because by the time you start having treasury bill yields around 30%, you know, what kind of business are you going to do? Bank loans are already over 30% before this announcement. So what kind of capital investment are you going to do with 30 yeah. something percent money? So certain parts of the economy, the real sector, anything that needs leverage, uh, will have to take a back seat. Probably for the rest of the year. Probably the for the rest of the year, going, yes. Yeah. The, the, the unfortunate thing is that, I mean, it's good to appreciate the currency rapidly. But there's a lot of inventory in the system that was bought at much higher rates. That inventory has to work through the system. So you're not going to see a drop off in prices instantly. Meanwhile, you're going to make importation extremely attractive. So if you're trying to do a business now and you're doing your capex at 35% borrowing cost, or you can just get a sharp appreciation in the currency and you can import, you know, why would you do the capex? So certain parts of the economy are going to have to take a back seat for now until um, stability can return. But the rates are going to keep going higher. I don't see how Naira rates go any lower from here. Yeah. Can we draw any similarities from you know our situation and Ghana, not the debt side? The because Ghana is coming from fifty four percent inflation and they're down to somewhere around twenty nine or, or so. No, twenty three. Twenty three or twenty three. So I mean that that's a significant drop. And I keep asking our uh, Ghanaian analysts when we talk to them from day to day, and they say, look, yes, it was worth it. Because I keep asking because I remember then when it was at fifty four, and we kept seeing these hikes, and I kept asking them, the economy is strong, is being strangled in the process. We're seeing. Uh, utility bills, we've seen inflation, uh, uh, utility taxes, all kinds of taxes on the consumer who, that was already uh, who was already pressured. But it turned out to be, uh, I mean, a good decision uh, in court for them. So, can we look at our situation as such? I think I think Ghana went for shock therapy. They increased rates aggressively, attacked inflation, but also where Ghana was coming from, there were less subsidies. So Ghana had they didn't have subsidies on electricity, there are less subsidies on fuel, a lot of things. We're trying to wean off Nigerian. Um, people from other subsidies at the same time as trying to address this issue. There's so many things going on at the same time. I mean, the one saving grace for Nigeria at the point in time is that we had no euro bonds that had to be repaid in 2023 or 2024. Okay. We, in the next three years, we have about $7 billion of euro, bond, of euro bonds that have to be repaid or refinanced. So we have only the, really this year to try and get into a position where we can go back into the market. I think we have about $2 billion of euro bonds that need to be refinanced next year and another three or four billion over the next other two years. But going back into the market, going to the Yoruba market, we're going to pay a high of course. yield. Yeah, because I saw be Kenya do around 10%, uh, Benin Republic did somewhere around, was it? Benin's credit rating is actually higher than that. Higher. Yes. <laughs> okay, so well, apples and, apples so and oranges. Oranges. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but when you talk about Ghana, Ghana got new money. True. Nigeria got new money. So you see, you can't just take but then there's the also that question too, do we need an IMF? No, not IMF. Having they had IMF, but they also had some new money. New money, okay. Com commercial credit. So you need new money. I don't, there's not like, do you need the IMF? You need the IMF policies, because those policies are good for economies, right? We took $2.5 billion from the IMF. If, if we are allergic to the IMF, why did we take that money? Right? We can't, you can't, you know, you can't take, uh, you, when you're allergic to tablets, you take it and then you now take your retainer or whatever you what you need to know is that whether we like it or not, we need, need new money from a cross section of creditors. When you have that new money backed up by institutional and policy reform, then you get the outcomes. You cannot just pass talking about Egypt and Ghana. And all you have to take the complete package. You can't take part of it. Mm, right. Again, I wanted to talk about this. I'm sorry, another comment okay. was that this 300, going from 700 asymmetric to 300, means that effectively, the banks are going to be borrowing at a lower rate. Why that switch from 700 to 300? Uh, it means that some of the banks are already being choked, right? Because okay. you're talking about capitalization. That itself is worrying. Uh, so there has to be some consistency. I, I like the fact that you reduce the asymmetric corridor, but you are encouraging people to come to the standby facility to the window to come and borrow from the central bank, which from a risk perspective, it 
raise his eyebrows. Raise his eyebrows. Uh, I was, I was going to kick off the uh, conversation on the banking sector. Of course, the recapitalization is coming up. And we have uh, seen, I've seen a couple of headlines suggesting that not many banks uh, will be able to meet uh, you know, whatever the figures that have been uh, bandied around. But in terms of just the overall health of the uh, financial services sector, what are your thoughts? And with this on, on com, uh, upcoming recapitalization, how do you see things playing out? Well, in terms of the recapitalization, the, the banks that probably have challenges recapitalizing are probably banks that were started in less than 10 years ago. Okay. So I, I'm not sure what some of these reports, I, I, don't, I didn't understand what they were actually saying because what matters is your shareholders' funds, not your share capital, right? And shareholders' funds for tier one banks, between 1.2 and 2 trillion, even the, not, the tier two banks, it's, it's very high. So it's only the new private banks that might run into trouble. What's the size of, of, of capital requirements? Probably 10 times what it was in 2010. Um, and so again, if you're a newly incorporated bank at 50 billion and they say you should go to 250, you might have a bit of a problem. But really, that's not really uh, a solution to anything we're talking about right now. Because just talking about the asymmetric corridor, I mean, if, if you can place money in CBN at 24.75 minus 3, that's 21 percent, you know, how much are you going to price your loans at? You know, and that's the challenge people need to bear in mind. And the bank rate has been well over 20 percent, if I was 30 something, almost 40 percent. You know, two weeks ago. So there are liquidity challenges in the, in the system because of the CRR um, levels and a lot of the security sales. Anytime you do a TB auction, you sell one trillion. Where does that one trillion go? Yeah. So CBN, where does it come from? Customer deposits. So the system we had minus 2.5 trillion two weeks ago, negative. Mm -hmm. You know, something we've never seen even minus one trillion. It was over minus one trillion for two weeks. And that cycle is likely to continue. So the banks are not in a position to lend. Most banks are not lending. Well, I guess, I mean, this is a year, and which is part of the, I mean, the strategy of the monetary authorities, just Slow. everyone lay low for this year. Mm -hmm. Let's just focus on inflation. Slow down the, the slow economy. The, yes, slow it down. And then when we you know, come up for some air, hopefully inflation will be 21.4%. Oh, my God. CBN yeah. uh, is target. I mean, it, it is a target. Kayode, I'd like you to comment on that. 21.4, uh, that is a, a target. Uh, which is uh, which is important. Uh, do you think that the C Bank governor is satisfied uh, with this plan so far? I think he's working towards. He's obviously working towards trying to tame inflation and push it there. I think, as is, as has been said by um, my fellow panelists, growth has taken a back seat. They're not worried about that. I think they're worried about taming inflation and maintaining maintaining financial stability across the system. Um, recapitalization has been mentioned a lot of times. Now, that recapitalization, no details has come out yet. There have been rumors. Now, was that recapitalization was mentioned when the CBN governor first came in, and he's mentioned it two or three times since. Now, you have to ask yourself, is that, was that meant to try and rein in banks from paying big dividends and making sure they risk conserve cash by warning them that recapitalization is coming in place? Mm -hmm. uh, sort of thing, who knows? But I think the, the tier one banks have said are going to be fine whatever the capitalization is. Right. I think the tier twos, I think they're doing some, a lot of m and The tier twos and tier threes, I think those, a lot of those banks, especially the new ones, All right. are so going to suffer. We're just having some comments coming in from the CBN. I wanted, you to, yeah. wanted to get your reaction to this. So uh, the CBN governor has said that as long as the environment warrants a tightening, the CBN will continue to do so. And ex they expect that by May, things should continue to, should begin to stabilize. Bismarck? Yeah. May, so and some kind of Silver lining, well, light at the end of the tunnel? Directionally, yes. But in terms of nominal, like I said, it wishes were us as beggars will ride. We still have a long way to go. The lags do not support that notion. We have a long way to go. There's a bumpy ride ahead. The exchange rate was stabilized okay. at those levels, maybe 1,200 and all of that. But, and because of the hot money, if the hot money starts reversing itself, then so we need to sequence it. We need to have some Eurobond talks, some new money, some policy support instrument <coughs> programs with the IMF, then block the leakages, carry out the institutional reform. And there's a lot of bitter medicines to swallow there before we can now say, I would look, look towards the end of the year, not at 21. I'll be looking at about 23, 23.5%. 23. Because if we take all of these things together, there's no, you cannot crash inflation that way. I mean, 23 versus 21, I mean, still in the <coughs> neighborhood. Your, your thoughts or your reaction to uh, that statement uh, by the CBN governor? I think it's, I mean, it's consistent with the philosophy you're talking about right now. I mean, 
as long as inflation is actually rising, which will continue for the next few months, it's very hard for them to do anything but actually increase rates. Not even stay, stay, stay on hold. They actually have to increase. And so they need to, to follow that trajectory. Whether in two months the problem will be over, I doubt it because two months, the <laughs> comparison to last year is, is before, before, um, before, before half year. And so the, the cost base in the economy across the board, petrol, exchange rates, everything was much, much lower. So you probably, um, they probably cannot, they, can't, they definitely cannot cut rates anytime soon. And they'll probably increase rates at the next meeting. Mm. Probably just a, I mean, just a signal uh, to the market that, look, as long as in conditions uh, warrant this, we are on top of, you know, we're on top of it and we're going to continue to tighten. I wanted to ask you about that. I don't know if I should ask Kyle that, but just to get your thoughts on the stock market uh, mm. so far <laughs> this year. Over 30 percent, uh, I mean, January, February were spectacular months uh, for the market. Uh, we, went somewhere over 39%. And we've seen some that focus on, of course, industrials, banking stocks, those the stocks with strong fundamentals. Uh, we've seen uh, Transco Power come into the market by, you know, in terms of listing, et cetera. But what are your thoughts in terms of th just the trading psyche of the Nigerian, typical Nigerian stock investor at this time, how they're looking at the economy and macro indicators, especially inflation and FX? Well, the first thing to bear in mind about that market return of almost 40% is it's highly concentrated in a few mega cap names. Yeah. If you take those out, I mean, it's the, the returns are not as, wide, as, as high as, as they sound. But the market is definitely much higher than you would expect, given where the risk-free rate is. If you were already at 27% risk-free, there's a TB auction tomorrow, the rate will probably go higher. So you, it's, 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 it's... How high are we talking about? One year yield easily could be like 29% by the end of this week. Wow. So in, in that situation, you're wondering how the stock market is able to hold up but bear in mind that a lot of the stocks that are holding up have, have dividends coming, and they were already very cheap on a relative basis. But the next six months might not be very great in that market because there's no catalyst. And by the time people find out they can get almost 30% risk-free for one year, you know, the of choice course. is relatively easy. It's made already. <laughs> kind of your thoughts. I mean, the stock market's in trouble. Um, you're, you're seeing results come out. They're not going to be dividends. MTN is not going to take a dividend, final dividend. A lot of the, the key um, com companies that people follow are not going to declare dividends. Yeah, but so isn't this going to be some sort of a, just a one-off event? Yeah. I mean, we knew there was going to be an FX hit for many of those names, but it was a magnitude that nobody saw coming. Let me ask you a question. If you had uh, 100 million naira today, would you invest it in equity or would you put it with go government at 27%? I'll probably give you an answer offline. <laughs> 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 and, and that's just the reality. And until we address, so they have that issue. Then the equity markets also... I mean, the stock exchange has been too slow in reforming itself and bringing back confidence into that market. And now they've reached this kind of bump. And I hope this is a catalyst for them to start reforming so that when the market, when there's a chance for the market to recover, it can recover f um, properly. But I do have to ask you the next obvious question. Yes. What kind of reforms? Just maybe one or two that the stock market is in need of. We, we need, one, we need more transparency in the market. Okay. You have, I mean, people, the, the stocks that get issued and stuff like that, and you already know it's going up based on what fundamentals, who knows? Um, you have certain um, stocks that are linked to loans that everyone knows about. So they declare a dividend every year. And they show some kind of progress every year while because their margins are linked to that. The stock market has to provide that and has to bring back confidence domestically. Because right now, the biggest investors in the stock market are PFAs, because they have to. The domestic retail from 2000, the 2006, 2008, when the stock market was really taken off, was retail-based. But that's domestic. interesting because when I talk to stock analysts, they keep telling us, oh, yeah, it's the local investors who are holding up this mm. market. Didn't really occur to yeah. me there was, I mean, PFAs yeah. are local. Yeah. I mean, they are local, local investors. investors. But the retail guys have it. not been in the market since 2009. No. They just haven't. And, you have, and you're now calling foreign investors to come and invest in your market when your retail guys don't have no confidence in the market. Until you address that issue, why would I... You're not, you're not going to go anywhere. And so those are the kind of reforms that need to be put so in place. So transparency. Transparency, uh, bring back confidence in the market. That will be transparency, uh, reforms within that. Um, let's um, make it easier for people to trade. Make it easier for people to list. People are delisting. Companies are delisting from the market. Let's get tax breaks for people. Who, but when you hear of, I mean, the, the Transco Power coming to the market. Yeah, but Transco is part of the community. But look, let, let, let's, what, what we should do, you can only get government contracts if you're listed. You can only um, give tax breaks for people who list. That improves the transparency. That gets more people, more of those companies in the stock market. Right now, the cost of being on the stock market, compliance and various mm -hmm. other costs, is, is 
is worse than me being in the stock market. I will raise capital in the stock market. Because the big thing for the stock market normally is that you raise capital from it. True. It's very hard to raise capital outside the PFAs and one or two institutional investors. So until you start making it more profitable for companies to be in there, build up confidence in the market, the stock market's not going anywhere. Well, that's an interesting take. We have one minute before mm -hmm. we go on break. Uh, Bismarck, let, let me give you that. Natural you know, we'll reaction. Start off with Interest rates increase, stock market values decline. One. Two, what you had in January and February was a typical asset bubble, irrational exuberance and momentum trading. It's bound to correct itself very sharply. Um, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Securities Exchange Commission, had taken a good look at this. You need to correct this. So we've had many situations where people were pumping and dumping stocks and all of that. There's a lot of that going on. That has to stop. And there has to be penalties for doing this kind of things, right? So uh, the thing is that would you rather invest in the stock market and then the guys say we have a stock market loss and then we won't pay a dividend, or you buy real estate, or maybe you just go and buy foreign exchange and stay there where the rate of inflation is 3% compared to the rate of inflation of 30%. Right. So those are the things you must understand that these are rational investors and rational agents. So they do the right thing. Right. Thank you so much, Bismarck. Hold your th thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time so far. But we we'll just take a break at this time. I have been speaking uh, so far to Bismarck Rwanda, CEO of Financial Derivatives. Uh, but also, Kaida Kindele, uh, CEO of Coronation Capital and Igia Pata, Chairman of Skyman Partners. That have been, of course, my panelists today uh, for our special broadcast of the CBN's MPC meeting. We'll take a quick break and I'll be right back with the rest of our conversation. Join us again. <laughs>